All right, so welcome back everyone. I hope you're enjoying this 90 days security challenge for uh, for preparing your CompTIA Security Plus exam. Right, so before we go ahead, make sure if you're new to this channel, subscribe it right away because this is definitely gonna boost me up to make more such videos, all right? And uh, talking about the current video, this is all about risk treatment. As of now, we have learned about risk assessment. We have learned about type of risk. We have learned about how to document it. Now we have to learn about how to treat it. Okay. Once we know what is the threat. Okay. We have almost covered many of the components, but let's be very, you know, let's, uh, yeah, let's cover some of the professional jargons with it. Okay. So the first important kind of a technique used for risk mitigation, risk treatment is the risk mitigation. Now it is pretty obvious. It's a, it's a security control. It's a security control that we have talked about, uh, which is proactively deployed, proactively implemented before undertaking the risk. So this is, this is like, you know, a solution like antivirus. So this is pretty much obvious, right? We understand that any of our computer can be compromised. So, we definitely need antivirus, right? And we by default need a firewall as well. We obviously know that my employee is going to access the internet, right? So I definitely need a firewall, that's for sure. So that's a pretty obvious thing. If you have a web application, you definitely need a web application firewall, that's a WAF. Maybe from any of the vendor, but you definitely need a WAF solution to protect your web application, right? So this comes under the uh, risk mitigation where you are sure that you have no choice but to go with the security controls, right? Next we have risk transference. Now this is very interesting. You can actually, uh, you know, there are some sort of a risk where you have to transfer those risks to third parties. To It can be with a different department, but usually it is considered to be with the third party. Maybe you transfer the risk of uh, uh, detection, proactively detecting the advanced threat right so you know very well that if you go with setting up or detecting the advanced threat or apt kind of a threat uh, those are advanced in nature those are persistent in nature you might need to you know you it would be not feasible at this moment moment to deploy all the resources so you transfer those risks those risks to the third party it can be outsourced soc team as well where you transfer the risk based on uh, in exchange for the amc or any of the you know uh, pricing structure that you wish for or it can be even a solutions like cyber cyber security insurance right so it can even be about cyber security insurance right so that's all about the transference next we have something really interesting and also sometimes confusing as well because you see, uh, this is something which is we we uh, cybersecurity avoidance is an activity because uh, it's it's a basically it's a kind of a decision uh, the organization make because the risk overweigh the uh, potential gain. So organization can't eliminate organization definitely understand that they can't really eliminate the all the risk from the organization. Okay, so they are pretty much sure about it. So the right risk uh, avoidance strategies. Uh, however, I mean, they go with the selecting the right, right avoidance strategy or, uh, you know, that help the organization to prevent some, uh, some of the losses associated with the risk. So example in the real world could be, you know, um, maybe organization go for risk avoidance, uh, maybe the manufacturing business plant or any of the chemical industry, chemical business plant might not should not uh, be using any any certain hazardous material or chemical due to the danger of uh, dangers of handling or storing those chemical inside the you know in the premises so that could be considered as the risk avoidance where you understand the uh, you understand the risk overweigh the potential gain right or it could also be the organization limiting the type of uh, customer data it stores on its a computer in case of cyber attack so they tend to they, they can you know, think about any other solution where they you know store it somewhere else or they decide not to store that data at all right so that comes under the risk avoidance now uh, we have the last 
uh, I mean, of course, there are many, but I'm covering some of the very important, in fact, very specific to this exam as well. So the next is the risk acceptance. Now, risk acceptance is very specific. It's it's very obvious as well it, as it might sound. Uh, it's all depends on the organization risk appetite. So the organization can can think that okay, if the uh, the in order to apply the security control, I might have to spend a lot, but you know, uh, this risk is very minimal. Maybe I might, if, if the risk or the threat really, uh, you know, realized, I might lose hundred dollars an hour, right? Which is pretty minimal or, you know, acceptable for any organization, any large organization. So they might, uh, you know, accept those risks and, you know, go ahead with it. Right, so that comes under the risk acceptance. I hope you got the idea about different types of risk. These are some of the major category. There are some more as well, which you can refer. Uh, I'll show you in the link as well. But these are some of the major and more important as well. Sometimes people get confused between the risk avoidance and risk acceptance, but you have to be sure about it. All right, so thank you so much. Thank you.